All righty, we are live Monday night, January 15th, and as you can tell by my voice, I'm pretty rough, but uh, we got a special, special guest on tonight, Tyler Barnes, so uh, we're we're here, uh, not feeling the greatest, but we're going to get through it and have some fun, so I can't wait to bring him in. Um, North Carolina Flathead State record holder, uh, digital uh, media guy, social media Great guy, positive influence in the industry. So really excited. I've been talking to him the last few days about being on the show. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, what do you think, Liz? Let's bring him in, ask him all the questions. So before we get started, we're going to start off with a quick commercial from our headline presenting sponsor, Sea Arc Boats, and then we'll bring our special guest in. The Dynasty 2.0 was designed for the serious trophy cat angler and is most often used for tournament fishing. A major key to having a true cat fishing boat is its ability to keep the large fish alive so that they can be released back into the water just as healthy as when they were caught. The 2.0's unique design includes a 115 gallon live well that is equipped with an 800 and 1600 gallon per hour fresh water pump. This keeps the contaminated water filtered out and the fresh water coming in. The enormous live well gives plenty of room so that the fish don't get beat around on long boat rides. The Euro style transom allows for easy access in and out of the boat and is tall enough to deflect large waves that can sometimes arise without much notice. This transom is constructed from 3 16th inch aluminum for added strength. The easy access three door battery compartment has plenty of room for batteries, battery chargers, power pole pumps and additional storage. Rod storage is not a problem. The center rod box is 8 feet long and can hold over 15 rods and reels. The self-bailing bow deck sheds water out of the boat instead of back in the boat when throwing a casting net. The casting area is constructed from tread plate to help eliminate slippage. The bow is also taller than the previous model to combat rough water rides. All of this in combination with the proven 15 degree V-hole, an added reverse chine for more lift, heavy duty 125 gauge construction, Seatco air ride captain and passenger seats, and a durable walk-through windshield makes this boat the most popular in catfishing. All right. Whew. Okay. So, uh, again, my voice is a little rough tonight, but we're going to get through it. And again, without further ado, let's bring in our special guest, Mr. Tyler Barnes. How are we doing? Hey, what's going on, man? Good to be here. Yeah, so you're out. You're out on the East Coast. We're out here in the Midwest in Illinois, and I'll tell you, it's been rough for us. So Liz is a teacher, and she's been out for since last week. Yeah, we've had like four or five snow days. So I mean, we had snow. We've had yeah. cold. I think right now the temp is like negative eight, negative ten. <laughs> um, tomorrow they're out of school, and and we're not like that town where you know a little dusting and everybody freaks out. I mean, we're used to snow and stuff, but we're not used to you know, this negative, I think it was a feel like negative 40 yesterday or something like that, but, uh, right. Right. Yeah. We are, that, we are that little town though. You, if they even talk about a little bit of snow, man, we're shutting the whole town down, man. It's over. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah, hopefully, uh, they just actually called school again tomorrow. I think for the cold, because it's like a high of, I don't know, we're in the negative still. So, My goodness. um, and then I think I looked at next week cause I was supposed to travel to Oklahoma to do some stuff for twisted gap. And uh, next week, it looked like in the 40s. So, like, I'm pumped. Like, you know, once we get that first real cold, after that, like, 30, 40 degrees feels like it's in the 70s. So, That's I'm ready right. for that yeah. and uh, ready to get back on the road and get some things rolling. Because there's no fishing. Maybe some ice fishing, which I've not done yet. But there's right. no fishing on on, uh, on a boat for sure. Yeah, certainly not. Oh, my gosh. So uh, let's let's kind of get into this and let's let's talk about Tyler Barnes. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about. You know, uh, I'm sure we'll get into, you know, the what you're where you're fishing, what you're fishing out of your gear, all that stuff. But let's start from the beginning. Where did Tyler Barnes? How did you get into all this? How did you get into the social media creation? How did you get into trophy fishing for catfish? 
Yeah, man, certainly. So, so really, um, and I may have a similar story to a lot of people and I, and I'm sure that there is a lot of people in here that's watching now that might can relate. Um, but essentially really how it started for me at a very young age, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, I grew up fishing on the riverbanks uh, with my father targeting catfish. Now, at the time, we, you know, we're not very serious about the, you know, the sport. We just went because it was fun. We enjoyed it. Uh, it was a good time, you know. It was all about uh, camping on the river, setting a campfire, maybe grilling out some cheeseburgers or hot dogs or something, and, you know, have a few catfish rods out, man, with little glow sticks on the end, and, uh, and and that's what we enjoyed to do on the weekends. Well, we, um, you know, and, and over time, you know, we just kept diving into it and diving into it and diving into it. And, um, you know, eventually we, we finally got around to getting like a uh, like a 14 foot, uh, you know, little single wide John boat with a um, like a little six horsepower Evan Rude motor. And we won't even really plan to fish off the boat. It was to get to different sandbars to fish off the sandbar right um so we would like look at the maps and stuff together I'm, I'm a kid you know i'm like you know dad you know that being right there i bet there's a big one in there you know stuff like that well years later um uh when i was 18 i'm now 28 years old um my dad actually passed away unexpectedly and um i did pursue the sport of catfishing further i got more involved into it started um you know really really studying these fish started fishing some tournaments and uh after that man after honestly i started getting more into the tournament side of things i knew then that this for certain was for me so i'm a, i'm kind of a guy you know i'm um you know whenever i go fishing i'm in a tournament man, i'm trying to win okay i'm trying to win this thing so uh you know i'm very competitive always have been and um uh, and still am so I'm, I'm very passionate about the sport of catfishing i love to see how the sport is growing so rapidly now i mean it's incredible i mean here we are right now you know going from and, and time's flying too so i like to see how you know uh, just reminiscing on the on the old times from from keeping it very simple to you know camping on the the riverbank to getting in boats fishing tournaments traveling doing podcasts on catfishing the conservation the laws to, and, 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 you know, it's very exciting to me and uh, to, to be involved in the sport of catfishing and to to see it progressing further and further. So it's, it's just very exciting for me. But that's that's really how I got into it was from my father. Uh, and like I said, when he passed away, we kind of or, or me, I, you know, kind of got more just dialed into it and really started taking things more serious than just camping on the riverbank on a weekend yeah so <clears throat> obviously behind you it uh, it started from that that uh you know fishing on the bank and uh you know being diving into you know that next bin that might hold that giant i mean look at when you're passionate about something obviously you're very passionate you can <laughs> you're now a state record holder in flathead uh which is a big deal we were kind of talking about that backstage I guess let's let's everybody talks about, you know, what happens if you catch a, a record fish, you know, I guess give us your that story of that that trip out, you know, kind of how you uh, did you think it was a record when you first caught it kind of go through that and talk to us about that. Yeah, so certainly so definitely, definitely, definitely a night, obviously, that I'll never forget. So and this is a long drawn out story that I'm going to try to shrink up because if I don't, it's going to take the entire podcast. Okay. <laughs> so, we, we we do that. but, uh, but, but, you know, really, um, here in Goldsboro, North Carolina, there's a local, um, bait and tackle store known as easy bait and tackle. And they, they hold an annual catfishing tournament and it's essentially biggest fish wins but they pay out top five okay um or top three uh, some years it's a little bit different uh, but while fishing this tournament um i went out one night um you know looking at the water levels 
looking at the moon phases, looking at my bait that I had and, and looking at all the factors. And um, it was actually, you know, I took off of work too, just to make sure that I went out fishing on this night because the scenario was perfect for a big flathead catfish. And it was, ended up being a little bit bigger than I was thinking it would be. But um, actually the night before, um, you know, I went out to an area knowing the conditions were still similar and very good. Um, you know, I was able to land one, you know, somewhere around like 53 pounds, which, um, you know, put me pretty good in the tournament. But the next night, before I get too sidetracked with all the excitement that's going on in my head now, um, I put in the, you know, I, I launched a boat. I went to my first area of the night. So, and to describe that area, it's it's a it's relatively a narrow section of river, but it's also very deep. So so traditionally for me, when the sun is setting, I like to target a little bit deeper water. And whenever I say deep in the rivers that I fish, I'm talking like, you know, 12, 14 feet of water. Okay. So that that's actually that's actually pretty deep for us. So I try to always start off in a in a little bit deeper area and as the night moves on these fish try to transition out of these little deeper pockets and deeper holes and straightaways and things like that and lurk into the shallows so long story short i started off in that hole uh and didn't really have much luck um it was it was you know i think i caught a small channel cat sat there for about 45 minutes moved to another spot didn't have a lot of luck um i don't think i even had a strike went to another area not too far and um did not have a strike but i knew that was okay because something you know alex something that i've noticed over the years of taking notes and journaling and fishing and just looking back at the history i traditionally catch larger catfish now not as many but larger trophy fish on the new moon okay so with that being said i was still comfortable very comfortable not looking for a lot of fish looking for a fish right so when i left that third spot i was ripping down the river i was looking you know got my you know my light bars going down the river and i'm looking and i notice this little tree laid over on the side of the river. I said, man, I don't know that I've ever noticed that. And it wasn't no massive, no, it wasn't no massive oak tree. It wasn't the biggest log jam in the river. It was simply a small tree that had fell over in the river. So I looked at it as I was driving by and I said, no, I ain't gonna worry about that. It was just eye catching. So I kept going down the river about five minutes and I had this overwhelming feeling of Tyler, I need to go check that out. Turn around. So it, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm wasting my time, wasting my time. But then it hit me again. And I said, okay, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to go fish this spot for 30 minutes. I said, that's not where I want to go, but I'm having this feeling that I have to do it. So what I did is I turned around and I went back and I sat up on this little tree now little tree and keep in mind too at the of course we don't really know the conditions here but the the river was on a slight rise so the current was not dead still it wasn't ripping fast but it was a moderate a good moderate flow which is perfect and i love that um so i looked at the tree and kind of did a little bit of scanning around it and stuff. i said man there really ain't nothing here man i said there's a little dip a little dip on the on the um downstream side of the tree so you've got a flat you you've got a tree and then you've got a, just a little dip and a lot of times that's all it takes so essentially what i did is i threw the anchor out and i floated past the tree okay and i tied the anchor off and what i did is i took one of the biggest baits that i had in the live well which was a shell cracker and i'm you know he's probably you know pound and a half bait at least right a monster shell cracker and i put him on the hook and i throw him upstream which is something i, I try not to do a whole whole lot not not because it's not a good tactic it's because i'm a guy that fishes with tight drag and I let the rod action actually set the hook in the fish. I don't I don't free line. I don't set clickers and let the line go free. You know, 
I'm always a tight drag kind of person. So throwing a, a rod up river is not really, you're asking to lose a fish. Well, anyway, I got the other rod set out and I was on the phone with a friend of mine. And uh, when I'm sitting here looking at the rods and we're talking about 15 minutes in, about 15 minutes in that rod that I threw upstream, right in that little dip, man, I'm, you're talking a foot difference. Okay, just a foot, just a little dip. It, it it went from being dead still to just thump and started rocking very slow. I, and so I, I was talking to my buddy. I said, Jacob, man, I said, look, I think I've got something on here. I said, let me call you back. So this rod's sitting here thumping and, it, and it's, it's slowly rocking. I said, man, that is traditionally the way that a monster flathead would hit. He comes by, sucks the bait up, and he's just holding it. And that rod's just sitting here you know, just slowly going down. So in this scenario, I knew that I couldn't wait for him to run with it for two reasons. One, the rod's going the wrong way. And for two, I'm right beside a log pile, this little tree. I said, I surely don't want to get him hung up. So what I do is I pick the rod up and I let him pull just a little bit. And when I feel a decent amount of tension, I do an artificial hook set, like a, I just sweep it, I do an artificial hook set into the fish. And Alex, let me tell you something. I went from calm and relaxed to just like, dude, it was like a rocket ship. It's like I hooked off to a rocket ship, man. Whenever I set the hook in that fish, it, he jerked back and started peeling drag and was splashing and going nuts. Keep in mind, I'm only in three and a half feet of water. <laughs> so he's very shallow so he's splashing and going nuts and i'm like oh my gosh i'm thinking it's a monster blue cat and all the noise well i pull them and I, I crank the drag down and get them turned towards me and when i do that i'm reeling as he's coming towards me and he goes behind the boat and he's ripping drag i'm like at this point i'm really dude like i am taking off guard on this one man so let me tell you man this fish is just He's just screaming, and I'm like, I'm like, man, is this a sturgeon or something? What's going on here, man? So this fish is just, I mean, it's incredible. So I, I get him to slow down, bring him back, and just several runs, okay? He's up underneath the boat going, the rod's been under the boat. I'm like, I'm not prepared for this. So when I get the fish, finally... After several runs and all kinds of tactics and maneuvers and me thinking he's going, you know, come unhooked, I get him to the surface and I've got my headlamp always. And I'm looking at the fish. I said, man, it's a big fish, but you can't tell. You know, you know, it's a big fish, but you don't know. So I'm try I'm over here with one hand with the rod and I've got my net in the other hand. I'm trying to scoop him up. Well, he won't fold. He's so big. He's so big. He just won't fold in. And I'm by myself now. I'm, try I'm trying to do this all by myself. So I pulled the net back out and he takes off under the boat again. And I'm like, God, please don't let me lose this fish. Please don't let me lose this fish. So I followed him a little bit more, got him to the top. This time I set the rod and reeled down in the boat, like just right beside me. And I grabbed the braided line and I reached for his head and I finally found his head. So I, I grabbed his bottom lip and then I grabbed him with my other hand and I put him in the boat. So with me feeling like I'm having a heart attack, I'm looking at this fish, man. And I'm like, dude, what is this thing, man? And I've caught some big fish, you know, but I was like, man, this fish, I said, this fish is different, man. So I called my buddy back and, and I'm talking to him. And he, he, I said, man, I caught that fish. He said, oh, yeah, how big is he? I said, man, I said, man, I said, he's got to be 65 or bigger. I said, it's a big flathead, man. So, what I do is I always keep a set of scales in the boat. And what I do is I get the fish and I'm able to then put them in the net. And I cradle the fish in the net. And then I hook the scales onto the net and I weigh it. I got a set of crane scales, uh, like off Amazon or something, right? Um, and I weigh the fish in the net and he's 82.6 so i start laughing you know we're both laughing i was like man this thing's saying he's 80 pounds and he's laughing i'm laughing but i am secretively i'm like my scales are pretty close okay so i cut the scales off and cut them back on and when i weigh him again he's 81.6 in the net 
So I'm like, oh my gosh, state record 78 pounds at the time. The net is, you know, like two and a half pounds. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, I think I've caught the state record or I'm very close one. <laughs> so immediately, immediately at the time I was in this massive group um, chat with a bunch of other anglers um, and, uh, I, you know, I put in there, hey, potential state record, yada, yada, meet me at Easy Bait and Tackle in Goldsboro and um, and if you'd like to see the fish. So I called my buddy. We They got a big, giant 300-gallon tank up there, oxygen pumps. Um, so the first thing I did, I said, you know, I talked to my buddy Jacob. I said, go to Easy Bait, fill it up, put two bags of ice in it or three, put some G juice or better bait in there and put your commercial oxygen or your pumps in the live well. So what I did is of course I put them in my live well, got rid of all the bait, hauled tail to the ramp, loaded up the boat, headed to Goldsboro. Well, whenever I got there, you know, I got this crowd of people, man, like 30 people here, man. It's like two in the morning. And I'm like, geez, if this fish ain't as big as I'm thinking, I'm about to be embarrassed, man. Yeah, <laughs> oh <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, um, you know, I mean, just an absolute nervous wreck. We um we get the fish out of the line well, three of us cradle the fish and we bring it to the certified scales. And when it hits the scales, man, it's 78.9 pounds. And I like I started like yelling and hollering and like crying. I'm like, oh my, I like so much emotion because for me something that I'm so passionate about and for a fish that I target so seriously and love to learn about knowing that I then had the North Carolina state record. It was truly the most remarkable time of my life. It was, it was a night that I'll never forget. And, um, but, um, after that, the, the steps to actually getting, if there's anybody watching that, that, you know, needs to know, what happens if you catch a state record you first thing you need to do is obviously try to at least believe that it's a state record fish and if you get it weighed and you think it is or even if it's a couple ounces off it's still worth the effort and worth the try okay uh, some scales read differently um the first thing is try to keep the fish healthy and alive if all possible okay we all get excited and uh we all want to um you know um have a state record but it's, it's it's essential if possible to try to keep that fish alive um that's the first thing the second thing is you have to call um a uh wildlife biologist and a biologist actually has to come out and certify the fish on certified scales and and you once once seen in his eyes once the biologist sees the fish um he will then go ahead and announce you unofficially the state record holder however he'll come back and meet with you and you'll fill out some paperwork and the paperwork is essentially you know your name where did you catch it what bait what was the weight yada yada and you both sign off on it and then um, once the paperwork's turned in you are officially the state record holder so how it had to go for me keep in mind um you know i had to um keep the fish alive i was very nervous because i weighed in the fish at you know two in the morning well the biologist he didn't get here until about 5 30 or 6 in the morning so there was a couple things going on in my head first thing is you know man i got to keep the fish alive which was absolutely no problem whatsoever in the environment that we had them in and the second thought that you guys might be thinking is you know Tyler, what if it loses weight? What if it costs something up? You're only, you know, 14 ounces ahead. What happens? Well, take my advice. And if this ever happens to you and you do have certified scales that you and the biologist will both be using, record it. Okay. Because I asked that very question. I said, Ben, I said, say, per se, you come and the, the, we weigh the fish and it, and it, throws up a gizzard chad that's a pound just just for example or or whatever whatever it throws up because it can regurgitate fish to it all the time you see it in your live wheels um he said due to the fact that i had video evidence of me pulling it out of the live wheel 
toting it up there and having it on the scales with every with 30 witnesses he would have honored that um so that's a tip now i can't say all biologists would do that you know our north carolina wildlife biologists you know he no problem he would have definitely honored it but the fish in for another you know um just a side note here the weight stayed the exact same from the time that i originally weighed it at two and then again at six so the fish weighed the exact same two to the penny um but yeah alex that was you know and of course you know later after that i got my photos and we released that fish back into the noose river alive and healthy wow that's a giant like <clears throat> my i think my biggest is 40 pounds i caught it that at, at uh on wheeler and when i caught that fish i thought i had a 100 pound blue cat you know i remember yeah. it came up to the surface we were in probably 25 feet it was night and when i seen that flathead finally come up and then it swam back down and that tail I don't it's know. I, I think pound for pound, they're. I mean, they've got to be the, the toughest fighting catfish. I mean, for sure. They, like I said, I can't imagine one that big, let alone the forty pound I had. I thought it was a hundred pound blue cat. So, that's awesome, awesome. Absolutely, man. It was. It was definitely a. Um, you know, Alex. It, it was definitely a. Uh, you know, it was just a meant to be thing, man. It's. It, it was. It's truly it's incredible, man. So I'm trying to I'm soak trying it in to while I got it. <laughs> Yeah. So before you, so you, like we were talking, you got 78 pounds, 14 ounces and the record before was 78 pounds even. So, and how long was that record held? Do you know for sure? Yeah. yeah so he yeah. had it, the, the fella that had it before me, um, he had it for 15 years. Wow. Wow. That's a mm. long time. So how long do you think you'll have it well, until you, know, you break your neck until you break it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, man. You know, it's definitely a once in a lifetime fish. Um, you know, um, a funny story about that, Alex, is is I've got a couple pictures. Um, at the time when you know, going back in time with me and my dad fishing off the riverbank, we caught a fish. I was 12 years old at this point in time, and we had a campfire and camp and campsite and everything set up. And he was, you know, way down at this end talking with my uncle and I'm at the opposite end. He said, you know, Tyler, you know, just watch the poles. We have three rods out. And I'm just hanging out, you know, just watching the rod mesmerize, man. You know, no cell phone. I'm just sitting there staring like, man, when do you go down? When do you go down? <laughs> so same thing, actually, Alex. So and this is obviously no proof, no nothing. I got I got photos. Same thing. I'm 12. The rod thumps. And it's doing this and it's slowly slowly going down well i'm keeping mind i'm just a kid and i pick up the pole and i pull back and this thing starts peeling drag i'm like dad dad help it's a big one it's a big one you know so so man he's you know trotting over here you know thinking you know i'm like because i'm a kid he's like thinking it could be a 10 pound fish and i'm tripping out you know what i'm saying that's a monster i'm like no dad i'm telling you this is something crazy so we actually get the fish to the bank and he's like oh my gosh you know me too i'm like is it an alligator or what you know because we haven't seen a fish that big ever so we pull that fish on the bank and now that i'm older and i've caught larger fish alex you know and it's hard to say and i don't want to say you know that that was a state record then <laughs> because at that time the state record was only 68 pounds um but that fish i would put it up against the one that i caught any day any day so who's to say you know and i begged and i said man let's wait this time we didn't have scales we didn't have nothing all we got is pictures and we released it back into the river but now that i'm older i'm not too sure that it wasn't a, a state record at that time at least so it's pretty I, that's something i'll never ever forget and i'll always wonder it'll haunt me forever <laughs> do you do you think growing up fishing from the bank as much as you did that that taught you and, and gave you some insight now that you're fishing out of the boat more oh yeah certainly certainly so so what we used to do is not only did we catfish but we would also go to the outer banks and drum fish for like bull red drum essentially same technique um you know you on the surf rod holders rods reels cup bait carolina rig throw out i mean it's you know essentially the same thing 
um, you know, bringing it here, learning tactics and stuff like that. You know, when you're bank fishing and, and you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with bank fishing. There's a lot of great anglers that catch monster fish right off the bank. Okay. That is, I mean, that is proven. I mean, there's people that dominate the catfish off the bank, catch bigger fish than I ever dreamed of. Um, but absolutely, man, because everybody's scenarios are different and every river is built different. But um, as far as bank fishing for me, I think is a learning process. It's definitely a, it was definitely a great um, learning curve on what tackle to kind of use and what to, what to really, what baits work better really um but as far as getting more advanced you're in my opinion i was definitely limited um to bank fishing because obviously i can't move right it's either you know I throw out and the river's rising and they're moving or it's low and whatever's there's there so so uh ram outdoors asks i know you like to fish 30 minutes and kind of run and gun if they're not biting do you sit longer at a spot during the spawn? So do you, when you're flathead fishing, are you, or I guess, do you flathead specifically fish sometimes, or is it kind of just a mixture? Uh, and how do you do that? Do you do a run and gun? Do you sit? Cause you know, you always hear, you know, I'll sit for six hours. Cause I know there's going to be that one big fish. I mean, what's, what's kind of your tactic? Yeah. And you know, honestly, overall, overall and and like i said just endless hours of fishing it has noticeably proven itself to me that a run and gun tactic is better for me on these smaller rivers now and, and alice i can't i can't talk for you know lakes I, can, I can't i have no input on like lake fishing i'm very new to lake fishing i've always been a smaller river or a river fisherman in general but for me for me when the river whatever body of water you're fishing um as far as rivers are related and i've tried this with several rivers and it is proven consistent and has helped me win tournaments over and over and over um or at least place right Run and gun is, without a doubt, the best way to go about things, okay? Because me, the only time I will probably sit at a spot for at least an hour is if I am forced to fish during the spawn. That's one. Number two is if the water is very, very low, like bottomed out low if the water is on a rise or if it is at a elevated level of any kind 30 minutes 35 30 35 minutes and i encourage anybody that's watching um next time you go out and you're in an area of river that you know has catfish and you know that there's some by when you throw out, especially in the winter too, winter, summer, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do this all every 12 months out of the year. Okay. I'm the same tactic. It's the same method over and over and over. What you'll find is if you're using the, you know, the gears, whatever you prefer, but if you got the right bait choice out there and you throw out, you'll probably notice a couple things and you may have never keyed in on it, but I will assure you that you'll notice a lot of times you'll get a hit within the first 15 minutes and you'll catch a fish. You may double up, but after that fish, you decide to stay another hour, hour and a half. You may not even have a nibble. However, if the water is on a fast incline, and fish are rolling and are moving down the river, the banks of the river. Essentially, yeah, you can, you can. You, I mean, you can sit in spots longer, but theoretically speaking, in in uh, in an instance where the river is low, nothing drastic changes, no flood waters, no nothing. Say it's just a normal level, it's calm. You know, it's it's just a pretty day on the water you'll notice when you fish that piece of cover or structure, whatever it may be, it may be a ledge, it may be a rock pile, it may be a log jam, maybe a flat. You'll see that you'll probably have a hit pretty quickly, 10 to 20 minutes, okay? After that, you'll notice it's a ghost town. 
it's time to move. So me personally, 35 minutes, and I know that's strange, why not 30, Tyler, why not 36 minutes, but doing it for years, 35 minutes, if, if I don't have a hit in 35 minutes, I'm gone. Bank, take it to the back. I'm out of there. Unless it's during the spawn, like we were talking about, or or the river is super, super bottomed out low. I'm telling, I'm talking like super low. Um, and the reason that is, is because the water, if it's that low, there's a couple things. The fish are going to be finicky. They're going to be kind of confined in these areas. They're not going to be as, they're going to be more alert because the water is crystal clear. And they're not going to really want to, they're not going to be any kind of feeding frenzy. However, they will hit. You sometimes, you just got to give them a little bit more time to entice them. Um, but that's, you know, that's, that's, some, that's some tips, you know, from me as far as that goes and what I believe in. But there's a lot of anglers now, keep in mind, um, that experience things differently. I can only talk for what I've learned. Yeah. That's some really good insight. That really is. So I, I like the 35 minutes thing. It's 35 minutes. So do you set like a timer on your phone? As most of the, sometimes I will, or if I'm like on TikTok or something, I'll say, all right, guys, what time is it? And then they'll tell me, because uh, I try to do tournament fishing live on TikTok. So uh, so that was pretty cool. Like last year, uh, you know, I fished an entire tournament series on live with everybody and everybody, you know, it was a couple things. I, I wanted to to prove to myself and to everybody else that the things that I'm preaching are, is working. And I think everybody could see that, you know, I'm, I'm, I would legit say, okay, we're fishing here. He's going to hit in 15 minutes. We're using brim. Watch this. Boom. I mean, it was, I, you know, I did that because I wanted to encourage people and give them a different outlook on fishing because for me, catfishing is so important to me in my life. And I hate to see other anglers struggling with something that they really want to do good at, but may not fully understand because we all have to start somewhere. And if I feel that I can help, I'm more than willing and I'm very, I'm, I'm here for you. And I'm, I'm here to help if, if, you know, if somebody thinks, you know, my tactics or, or, you know, a conversation with me may help, I'm here for anybody. And I think that's a big part of why, like we talked about before the show and, and what you mentioned earlier is that the sport is, is on fire. It's growing rapidly. Um, and I think it's because of social media, which a lot of people can say is bad, but you know, overall, it's helping grow the sport. And I think it's in a Absolutely. positive way, especially for, you know, catch and release and taking care of fish. But, uh, you know, just like what you said, like what we're doing the live on the water stuff and you doing your tournament live. I mean, that's showing people, hey, I'm not a superhero. I'm out here. This is what I'm doing. I'm preaching this. You can catch fit. If I can do it, you can do it. And I think that's, that's what right. helps get the younger generation involved and get more people outdoors. Uh, sure. So. Uh, Angela said, could you explain the difference between a blue blue cat and a flathead on how they fight? Um, yeah, so, yeah. well, you know, so, um, I, well, you know, I say that, but sometimes, um, sometimes I actually get fooled myself. Uh, so, so, usually when you have a larger flathead catfish the bite will start at the bite the hit the hit can sometimes be slow slow pull downs he might sit there and play with that thing forever and then he might finally go with it um but depending on the size the 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 40 and up class fish tend to do that for me kind of especially when you get that 50 range they're kind of slow but extremely powerful extremely powerful a, a 20 30 15 pound flathead will hit that thing like a rocket ship and pull drag and you think you've got a monster in it and a lot of times it's not um a blue catfish for me depending on the time of year in the summer it seems in the spring it seems like they just come a thousand miles an hour and just lay into it and you think you sitting there everything's cool and y'all you hear drag going off and you're ah, get rock, get rock, you know, but sometimes like right now, 
um, when the water temp drops, um, the, the fish in here certainly has done nothing but pick up. Okay, it's only gotten better um, as these fish kind of group up. But these larger fish, um, you know, for over 40 pounds, 40, 50 pounds, it seems like they hit it and kind of pull and they'll like straighten your rod out, but they won't like, they're not trying to boom, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're kind of yeah. just, you know, it's solid. It's just, it's a bigger fish. But as far as actually hooking into and fighting, blue catfish tend, depending on the size, uh, fish under 25 pounds tend to come to the surface more easy and spin and do a roll, um, which can be, uh, can result in a lot of um, pulled hooks, okay? You got a fish pulling against the current, just chilling, you know. Um, a big 50, 60, 70 pound blue can, um, you know, um, a lot of times I've seen them hit and come to the boat, and then it's an up and down battle, pretty much. Um, flathead the same way, you know. Flathead, a big flathead. I will. Hey, let's put it this way: bigger flatheads and bigger blues. I would essentially say about the same kind of fight. A a big flathead is like pulling up a um, like a tree trunk, though, man. It's like he's just like. It's like you ever go flounder fishing, but imagine you got one on like 50 pounds, right? And he's just like, man, you can't pull him up. He's just like stuck. Um, so I would say neck and neck, a 50 pound blue versus a 50 pound flathead on the fight. It's probably going to take a little longer to get the flathead in, in my experience. Um, they are some very powerful creatures and they're, um, you know, they're, they're just, they're just a beast, man. But, but as far as like, uh, you know, it there's no 100 percent obvious difference to me because they all like different depending on the size of the fish so i hope so, that answered your question I hope that yeah, no, that's, 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 I, I, I agree with that too I, mean, I think it's times a year too sometimes but like i said it's for me i don't catch a lot of flatheads if i catch a i don't target them so if i catch one it's luck um like i said i kind of lucked into one on, on in the uh on wheeler but uh i just loved how when it came up to the surface just to watch that tail and that just Man. giant. It was so it's awesome. Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. So powerful. So powerful. Very, very powerful. So earlier we were talking about the 30 minute running gun. I think you need a, I don't know, maybe you already do, but you need a shirt that says the, the Tyler Barnes 30 minute running gun. Cause you've got quite a few people saying, I listened to Tyler Barnes 30 minutes and move this past summer and caught a 30 pound flathead, move less than 80 yards down the river and caught a 36. That's fantastic. Yeah, Mike said, my son has been trying the last two years to get me on the 30-minute rule, but I'm old and stuck in my ways. So I might have to listen to him. So I think there's a lot of truth to that, and you see that because, you know, I always talk about when you're tournament fishing and you're out there, you're competitive. Like, you don't want to get beat, so you don't get lazy. But if you're out there fun fishing by yourself and it's a bad bite, you can kind of get lazy and say, you know what? Well, now it's been two hours. I'm going to get my – a lunch or a sandwich out of cooler. So the run and gun can really kind of keep you moving and, and figure out what that bite is. I mean, I, I really like that 30 minute running gun deal. Yeah. Um, and that, that's just work, you know, over time, you know, that's just definitely, 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 um, you know, something that has, has grown and you notice it, you notice it. Like it's not something self-taught, but it's, you notice it. It's like, man, why, why, how come I sit up here and I caught him in 10 minutes? I ain't had a bite in two hours. Then I went to the next spot and I caught another one in 10 minutes and I didn't have a bite. Like, why is that? And then you keep going and you're going and, and then eventually yep. you tweak to what works for you. So uh, Mike Bode Doyle, he said in the spawn, uh, this is a guy from Illinois, and we got a lot of good flathead waters. He said, in the spawn, do you target flatties in shallow water, two foot and under, or deeper? Something went wrong. Please try again. <laughs> so, that, so, so that was, it was already <laughs> responding to my answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try again. Tyler. No, so, so really, um, the dead of spawn is such a hard time to catch flathead catfish. It can be done, but it's hard. But, um, you know, pre-spawn is a very, very good time. Very exciting. The fish are on fire and they're gorgeous. Man, it's such a great time to be fishing. But we're going to talk about the dead of spawn. Well, actually, 
the 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 areas that they're in is very similar for me in my body's water in the spawn or pre-spawn is is about the only time that i'm targeting that little bit deeper water meaning six to 12 feet okay so that don't sound deep right six foot yeah but six seven eight foot seems to be the key and then also i'm looking for the nastiest stuff that i can possibly find during the spawn okay as far as like log jams and and, and things of that nature but but you know that is pretty much you know what i'm going to be looking for is those six to eight nine foot even areas with that may have a big laid down tree and a river bend uh or it could be right on a straightaway it could be on a straightaway but on one end of the bank you may see you know most of it's flat but over down that bank right there it's like a channel that runs down that is i mean that's that's premier flathead fishing right there it can be three foot all over here but over here it's seven foot man it could be for 50 yards and there's a tree lay there you can bank on there's gonna be a flathead staged up there um and that's when i approach it in a way of being a little bit more stealthy just a little bit not 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 a lot you'll, you'll be surprised that you don't have to be stealthy in the shallow water um but that's when i will definitely sit about an hour in those areas like that um so i kind of hope that answered your question there but overall i will say catching flathead trophy flathead catfish you can still get, catch you know smaller 10 15 pound but catching the 40 50 60 pound in the dead of spawn one i wouldn't really recommend it anyway i i'm a fan of you know let them kind of do their thing for a little bit it'll last a couple weeks two or three weeks and then should go back to catching them but if you must go because it's a tournament or whatever it may be um you know get right up in there with them you've almost got to hit them in the face with the brim or whatever you're throwing i recommend live bait uh but you've got to put it within range man like this far like you've got to because a lot of times you can be on them and your baits ain't close enough and you'll say man i just know there's one here and it could be but if you're not you got to really entice that fish and a lot of times he'll pick your bait up move it and let go and not actually hit it he'll kill he'll, he'll grab it crush it let it go and just get it away from its nest um so but 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 really you know spawn man a lot of times it's a luck thing right time right place right little bait you hit it just there's so many variables that's why everybody says it is a ghost town during the spawn well ain't a ghost town the fish are there they're, they're thicker than ever they didn't go anywhere they're there it's that much harder to get them to hit so <clears throat> you you said something that enticed a question from me and then i got a couple more but when you said that they crush it, so I assume that most of the time you use live bait or you try to if you can have live bait? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, so for me, when I'm flathead fishing, and I'll go ahead and go through all the months, okay, for anybody that's asking, you know, some people say, man, you can't catch flatheads in the winter. Well, you can. Now, keep in mind, every region's different. You know, our lows here, we might get 20 degrees, 15 degrees. You know, you're talking about like what negative 10 over there, you know, negative 40 or, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so, so, so now that I don't know, I'm talking, I'm, I'm relating to Eastern North Carolina. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but we're going to start December, January, February, and the beginning of March, you can catch flatheads on little pieces of cut bait. I would never recommend you throw a live bait at all. Little pieces of shad, little, just little pieces of gizzard shad, man. Little stuff. Hit the deepest spots that you can find. The deepest holes that you can find. Low current. They're in there. Coming into April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November live bait i'm a huge fan of live brim and live eel okay those are two if you're not if you're not fishing you know during the summer spring and the fall with live baits for flatheads i'm not saying you can't catch them on cut bait because you can yeah i mean no doubt you, you certainly can but for me if you are seriously set out i'm going flathead fishing i'm going to catch them you need your limit of live brim and the live well that's my opinion okay 
So <clears throat> back to the crushing. When mm -hmm. I've I've been in situations where I wasn't targeting flatheads, but I've just I would have I had live bait and I'd throw it out and just they would just slam it, but like mm -hmm. let go. Like it was they would just strike it, kill it, and that's all they want to do with it. It must have been getting close to them and it wanted nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Have you what do you do in those situations? Um, throw out again. Yeah. Cause a lot of times, a lot of times, and I've done this many times, that's a good sign that there is a healthy fish potentially there, especially that only really happens to me during the spawn. If it happens to me during the summer, it, it, it seems to be maybe a smaller fish that was just being greedy. Cause a lot of times, you know, you throw a big bait out there and you might have a, fly, a five pound flathead just trying to swallow this thing, you know, yeah. but if it's starting to spawn and I'm throwing a massive brim, I'm talking a two pound, pound and a half brim, um, you know, and he goes and that rod's going down and then it comes up and I reel it in and the halfway of that brim is crushed soft. I'll take another one, throw right back over there. Sometimes I've had them do it. I had a scenario. I was fishing kind of in, on the outside. So it kind of was a bend and then it got a straightaway. Well, down that straightaway, there was a massive tree lay down in about seven feet of water. Well, I sat there. I took a brim. I threw that thing out about 30 minutes. He sat there. He hit it and and pulled down. I said, oh, I said, man, he let go. I said, God, oh. you can essentially see your line your rod going down and your line cutting across the water and then just let go he's just killing it moving it he did that three times so after the fourth time i said he's gonna take this thing so finally he smashed it and i actually ended up catching a fish being 57 pounds but it took four tries that's how finicky and picky they are during the spawn but a lot of times like i said they'll just move the fish out of the way they're not hungry they're just they're alert man they're trying to protect their eggs their nest they're just like don't come near me <laughs> well that's some good insight so we've got mickey asking sorry <laughs> uh what's in the future for for real fishing they he loves the brand and products his son wears his hoodie daily so what's in the future for that well, that's awesome. Now, so, such a great question. So right here, if you guys don't know, so we, um, I, I did start a business this April right here. It's called Four Real Fishing and essentially long term, uh, it is designed, uh, it's a company that we are ultimately trying to develop products that will change the industry as far as tournament fishing or just uh, fishing in general. Uh, and it's leaned towards fish care okay anything and everything to help keep your bait fish alive your um, tournament fishing your catfish alive and it's not going to be targeted just towards uh catfish okay it's going to be targeted towards any type of fishing hence for real fishing and not for real catfishing uh so that's that's kind of where we're leaning towards but at the same time this goes back to to me being passionate about the sport and you know really wanting to see the industry grow and thrive and i'm a person that believes in helping the fellow angler giving them real information not trying to throw them down the loop trying to get them involved and to help them catch fish okay um so essentially what we're also doing is um trying to build a a brand that is based around helping other anglers get better out on the water or if there's anglers that want a potential um you know there, there you know maybe some extra support on through social media as far as lifting them up um sharing their social media giving you know we want to give people confidence because there's so many great anglers out there on the water um that are really trying to build a name for their self so along with four real fish and not only having fish care products we want to lift up our fellow anglers and 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 really just bring a lot of positivity to our sport but as of right now, as you can imagine, building these unique tested products takes a lot of time. 
Four Real Fish has been here since April 1st of last year. So we're so I'm, I'm very blessed that we have so many people on board. We have so many people wearing our brand. We have so many people, you know, fishing in our apparel. Um, and, and we're very thankful for that. And I can assure you that together we're going to build something that is absolutely amazing for everybody. Now, for at the time being, we do have, you know, simple accessories and apparel. So right now it's just apparel. We'll be, we're building a presence, building the brand, and just have faith in us. But together we're going to build something that is going to be absolutely amazing for everybody. So that's a great question. But that's, that's, that's kind of where we're heading long term, but nothing happens overnight. Yeah, that's true. Man. Well, I'm excited to see, like I said, how far you came just in social media um, and all that stuff. There's a few more questions, but I, I, I want to kind of get into your start in social media. And, you know, for somebody watching, there's so many people that, like you said, the, the sports are going fast. There's a lot of anglers making names for themselves. You've obviously done that very well. Is there something that you would recommend, you know, a new person that says, hey, I want to get into this catfishing? I'm going to go all in, you know, do I need to, you know, get TikTok or kind of give us your social media breakdown of how you became so famous in the sport of catfishing? Man, so that's such a great question. And that is also why a huge portion of why we started for real fishing as well to help the people that do want to help grow their name in the sport. But if you're an angler, that is watching right now and you're like man you know first thing first thing do not get discouraged okay all right that's number one if it's if you don't see it working if you're making posts and you're tagging your companies that you represent and you're not seeing a lot of um clout or or, or a lot of you know it trust me it's working people are seeing people are pulling for you just give it time and do not quit stay persistent Every time you go fishing, I don't, it doesn't matter what fishing it is. It could be catfishing, trout fishing, flounder, whatever. If you want to grow in that sport, you can. There's a lot of potential for anybody. Okay, It's not we choose you, we choose you. No, anybody can make it as far as they want to. Never get discouraged. When you go out and you catch a 20-pound catfish, man, hold that thing up. Take a picture of it. Put it on social media. You know, I do recommend all social media platforms. Now, sometimes that can get hectic and you can't run them all, but, you know, go on Facebook, go on TikTok, make some posts, make some little videos, um, you know, uh, make simple posts. That's how I started. That's how I started. I went every weekend, and I don't care how good I did. I could have caught a 10-pounder. I could have caught a 50 or, or whatever. First thing I would do, take a selfie, a picture, hold it up, and say, went fishing on the Noose River this weekend, landed five fish, biggest ones, 20 pounds, can't wait till next time. Do it over and over and over. Start doing some videos, you know, trying to help other anglers out, saying, hey, this is, this is the knot that I like to tie. Check this out. You'll be so surprised on how many people – are you know so grateful that you took the time to give them some tips because things that we know um as you know anglers that's been doing it for a while sometimes you get you kind of forget that there was a time we didn't know nothing so don't forget that you started at nothing and you didn't know nothing i didn't know nothing we none of us knew nothing it's like I said, surround yourself with positive people. That's the, that is such an important thing. Surround yourself with positive people. I'm telling you, if there's a lot of negativity in your live feeds or, or, or not your live feed, your, your social media, if you pull up Facebook, man, and, and you've got people that are bashing this guy on this post and bashing that and, and that and that, block them. Get them gone. Psh, gone out of there you'll notice that your feed is full of nothing but positivity. Surround yourself with positive, positive people. Those people are going to push you to your next level. I promise you. Surround yourself with positive people. Promote yourself. Do not be afraid to promote yourself, okay? There's going to be times 
that you're saying, man, is this going to embarrass me? Is this going to make me look goofy? Or look, I do crazy stuff all the time. Look, it's <laughs> we're just like, I'm as goofy as it can be. Like, I'm just, look, I'm just some dude with curly hair out here trying to, you know, do, yeah. do some catfishing, man. Look, just go out there, have fun, stay positive, take some pictures, tag the companies that you represent. Doesn't matter who it is. It don't matter what boat you got. Doesn't matter anything. Just go fish, post pictures, go live if you would like to. I do encourage anglers to go live. I really do. I think that's, um, you know, um, you've got a lot of eyes on you, you um, and, and, and you can grow your name very well very quickly by going live, but you do not have to, okay? I know that's intimidating. I really do. Um, I remember my first time going live, I was like shaking in my boots. I was like, Jesus, Lord, these people going to think I'm crazy. Some some redneck guy over here, you know, talking about a catfish. But, you know, it ended up being some of the coolest stuff ever. Um, but, you know, like I said, there, it's just simple steps. Surround yourself with positive people. Go fishing. Support everybody that, that you feel like you need to support. Support your anglers, okay? We're all in this together. And, you know, just keep pushing and don't give up. And I promise you, here's one thing that you can take to the bank. If you're promoting and you're doing good in the catfishing world, there are companies out there looking for you harder than you're looking for them. I promise you, because when you're an angler that builds value to their self, you become value, valuable to the companies that you represent. Be very careful on the companies that you represent, okay? Well, it doesn't matter whoever you're pulling for, whatever brand you're using, that's totally up to you. It's all personal preference. But make sure the brands that you represent are good, like-minded, positive people because therefore that company will also push you to another level. So like I said, don't get discouraged. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you try and promote and keep doing your thing and surround yourself with positive people, you'll see that in just a few months time how much you've grown. So so don't give up and keep pushing because I'm pulling for you. And if there's anything that I can do for you, <clears throat> let me know and I'm here to help you. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Being positive. You know, a couple years ago, I had one of my best friends told me about Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, and he was always about, you know, get rid of that negative drama in your life and, you know, be surround yourself with positive people. Same thing in the catfishing industry. You know what I mean? Or anything that you're doing when you want to build yourself and like what you've done, you know, be positive, help others. And you've really helped others with, you know, giving advice. Because a lot of people don't want to come on my show because they don't want to give away their secrets or whatever. And it, it, you can't look at it like that. Because when you when you give away something you do or you go live, you're showing people, hey, that you can do this. And then they're you're building your brand. Um, and that's what's really, I think, helped take it off. There's so many people just just looking at the comments from YouTube and Facebook, you know, how many people are following you and you know, the 30 minute run and gun, you know, something that you might have just had fun with and say, This is what I do. Now look at how many people do that. You know, so awesome. every little thing matters, being positive, helping people out. Uh Man, that's awesome. So that's some great, great advice. Everybody watching, you know, understand that, that there are a lot of people, like you said, brands are looking for people like that positive influence people. You don't have to be the best angler in the country. That doesn't right. matter. You do but not. Being positive and being out there helping people. That's what it's about. And, and listen, you don't even have to tournament fish. Okay. If you think, man, I got to be a tournament fisherman to be, uh, well known in the fishing industry, you do not. No. Some of the most famous people don't have never fished a tournament in their life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm telling you, just being a good person and 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 doing the right stuff, man, you're gonna get there. If you want to do tournaments, that's a great way to collaborate with people and and get your name out there that way as well. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but some people don't like tournament fishing, and that is okay. And don't feel stressed like you have to, because here's another thing: tournaments are great until they stress you out because they will because if you're a person that likes competition such as i i like to it i like to go fish these tournaments and do good and if i don't do good why didn't i why didn't i do better i should have fished it like this i'm learning how can i get better that guy's always winning how can i beat that guy what's the deal here why why if he can do it i can do it how can so there's so many variables but everything as far especially tournament fishing 
takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, but I promise you, if you put in the work, there ain't a person out there that can stop you, okay? So you go out there, do your thing, and if you want a tournament fish, I'm pulling for you. If you don't want a tournament fish, that's okay, too. I'm still I'm still pulling for you. I, I want everybody to do good and enjoy the sport of catfish and just have fun, man, daggone. It's just about it. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, this stuff gets blown way out of proportion, okay? Like, don't get me wrong, catfishing's growing on strong, but man, there's a lot of things that's coming on in the industry as things are growing and new companies are coming out and just things is exploding. Everybody wants to get with the, with the things that's happening. The new th just just chill out, just chill, just go fishing, just chill. Don't don't go search for that and this or that. Just go fishing, make some videos, post. Let them come to you because they will. Tell it. Don't go to them. And that, there's yeah. nothing better than that when a company comes to you because of what you've done. You know what I mean? That's right. that's that's powerful. You know what I mean? It is. And they will, like I said, you you continue to be positive and stay out there, and companies will find you. That's hundred percent. They're always always looking. Um, right. Let's see. Back to a little bit of tactics, and we'll kind of get into some of the gear real quick. Um, rattles. So you're using a lot of live live bait. Do you use rattles? Do you think rattles helps, hurts? Give us your thoughts on. We always talk about rattles with everybody on the show. What's your thoughts on rattles? So and all right. So so when I get into topics like this, um, first thing I'm gonna say is if it's working for y'all, I'm talking to everybody watching. If it's working for you, don't change it. But for Tyler, I don't think the rattles do much. Okay, I don't. I've never used them, okay? A, a maybe a couple times I've used them, but doing the tactics that I do now, man, I don't see how the fishing can get much better. I'm telling you, I personally, me, me personally, do not use the rattles, nor do I think they benefit a whole lot. Now, there's going to be some people on here to say, man, that Tyler, man, he just don't know what he's talking about. And that's okay. I'm just giving you guys my honest opinion. I don't use anything extra. I've got a weight. I've got leader line. I've got a hook. And I've got my bait. The bait is what's going to get the fish. Because, man, you also got to think, man, how many... How many bream are out there swimming with rattles attached to them? You know what I'm saying? Just think. Yeah, you know, I know it adds a little vibration, a little. Uh, listen, just keep it. Just just keep it simple, man. In my opinion, okay. But some people may say, Tyler, if you ain't using a rattle, you ain't fishing, and that's great. But Tyler, personally, I, I personally don't. That's just me. Okay, which is good. Like I said, and like you said, if it's working for you, don't right. change it. Like I said, the main thing is you're positive in what you're using. You know? Correct. Um, then I had another question on the moon. So you always hear, you know, Scott or wind from the east, the fish bite the leaf, all these sayings. What's your thoughts on the moon? How important is if you're going to go day fishing and there was a full moon the night before? I mean, do you really, really focus in like, Okay, it's gonna be a full moon, the water's dropping. Like what what's your thoughts on the moon? Yeah, so the moon for me in the winter months, um man, I don't think it makes any difference, man. I to me in the winter months, because I'm I'm primarily targeting blue catfish, uh and historically, I ain't gonna say historically, but most of the time the water's elevated pretty good, the water's pretty murky, it's it's rolling. Normally the fishing is good every time I go out. Um, you know, if I if I know, you know, sometimes I'm fun fishing. I'm going to ramps that I know probably not going to produce that good, but I'm going anyway because I just want to go for a while. But if I'm really sincerely trying to target fish and like I've got a tournament coming or something, I mean I don't care what the moon phase. Is. I I don't I don't I'm not I don't see that one is better than another. However. For flathead catfish, when the water is very low, I have 100% noticed this pattern. On a full moon, when the water is low, I catch a lot of fish. Small. Small fish. Smaller. Now, I've caught some 50-plus pound flatheads on a full moon. 
but for me a full moon when the water's low I catch a lot of fish not quality fish but quantity well, sometimes you'll slip into a big one but on a new moon it's like a ghost town but I catch bigger fish almost every single time almost every time and I can tell people when we get to a captain's meeting or we get to the ramp or or if I go live I'm gonna say guys okay new moon tonight you know the river's kind of low it's gonna be dead slow but we have the chance to catch a monster and it holds true man you know Alex just about every time and I can't you know I can't confirm you know I, I can't tell you why because I, I really I really don't know I think you know you know the bigger and you know more dominant fish are definitely smart they're very smart and um you know i think the darker it is the more comfortable they are to movement and lurking and 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 you know being out and about man but as far as a full moon on low water i think i think man i think they're just not very 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 comfortable i i, I swear it kind of throws them in a in a loop like I, it's like they're not certain they can see way too well like i, I feel like i i don't know it's just it's a hard it's a hard thing to answer but what i can tell you full moon more fish smaller new moon less fish but bigger but the the true reason i mean i don't know i'm just gonna be honest with you i, I don't know i mean if i wish i did but it's very true it's very true very i'm certain on that that's good. How, that's that's good insight, though. Um, Trey Stroop says, Tyler, what's your favorite flathead rig, and what factors affect leader length? Yeah, so my favorite rig is right here. I got one in my hand. This right here is a 10 alt Daiichi offset circle hook with a snail knot. Okay, is that snail knot? All right, this is about 18 to 20 inches of leader. I have a aluminum crimp and then a stainless steel. Oh, another crimper. I love it. Uh, I love it. You like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's your crimp, and then I have a barrel swivel. That is it. That's simple. It's that <laughs> it. I've used it for years and years and years. And this is it. That's as simple as it is. And then I'll throw a... Um, I don't have one, but a just a sinker slider, just it's just a sinker slider rig or fish finder rig, whatever you like to call it. But that's it. It's just that simple, you know. It's really, you know, if you're going braid. You're going braid to a to a two way, mm -hmm. and then your sinker slider is on that braid. Uh, correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So do yep. you do that? Do you like to be able to if there's a little bit of current to let a little bit of line through that, um, or do you try to keep yeah. it tight? Yeah, I keep it tight. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so you're always that's always your lead, your your length. You're never gonna make it two foot or so you know, as far as the leader line length, um for me, I don't think it makes a humongous difference. Um if we're talking about flathead catfish. Now blue catfish, different rivers, deeper places lakes pulling plantar war stuff okay yeah yeah there's there's some times you probably need it longer um but for for speaking for for flathead catfish um in these shallow rivers you know essentially we're anchored up on a log jam or a piece of cover or a piece of structure whatever it could be a ledge it could be a rock pile a, a log jam whatever it may be you know i don't see that a you know, a liter this long, 18 inches versus a liter 25 inches. I don't, you know, and I've tried them all and they all work equally. They all work. I don't see that one does more than the other. Some people may say, well, Tyler, when you hook the brim, just makes them swim all around. Man, man, I don't know, man. You put a, you put a 10 out hook in a brim, man. He's, he's probably, you know, he's, he's tripping out a little bit. You know, he ain't, he ain't like he is. You just throw him in the water. I'm telling you. But and how are you, you know, hooking that? How are you hooking your bait? So there's a couple ways. So that's a great question. 
Um, I wish I had something. Yeah, I don't have anything I can use for reference. But in higher current situations, I'll take the brim and I will go from the dorsal fin towards, at an angle, the front of the head. Okay? And that keeps that, that brim somewhat better swimming with the current swimming with the current if that water's high and i hook him in the back of the tail and throw him out there essentially he's probably going to drown because he's got 40 mile an hour currents going through his gill you know he's he's not doing so good but however what i've seen is if i take that offset hook whatever hook brain you use doesn't matter whatever you like okay and i put at an angle from the door i wish i had like a i need like a replica or something um um and i go from the dorsal fin at a sharp angle towards the front of the head that does two things i personally think these flatheads a lot of times will try to try to get the bait in their mouth well any catfish head first from my experience from what i see head first so your hook is in there first okay Another thing is when you put it at that angle, I know there's anglers in here that's going to agree with this. How many times have you had fish hit, slammed a rod? Oh, man, why didn't he hook up? You reel it in. And the hook has turned and got back into the bait and covered up the hook. Man, you just, man, he missed. He was on it. And he was peeling, and he was, but he couldn't catch. When you put your bait at a sharp angle going towards, man, I, I need some. We're going to use this box up, right? You see this thing? That's the yeah. head of the brim, okay? Say that's the dorsal fin. You're going to come right here. Oh, okay, here we go. And you're going to come up like that, okay? So the hook's essentially going to be like this or something. Or something. I don't know. It's kind of, you know, anyway, it's so hard to say. But anyway, towards the front of the, towards the, front of the brim, that's going to help the brim swim with the current. And it's going to, um, you know, prevent that hook from laying over as i ain't gonna say it's gonna stop at 100 percent, but it helps it from laying over uh another way that you can do it that a lot of anglers do it is just you know simply you know say this is the tail they just hook it from behind the dorsal fin throughout the back and third and that's okay too i just feel like that is a better tactic when the rear, you know maybe it's a little low but i will say 95 percent of my time especially on a bigger brim i'm hooking up from the dorsal fin forward towards its towards the front of the head um horrible example matter of fact i need to get a um a replica with the hook in it and say like that's how it is <laughs> because that one feels kind of bad but it's so hard to it's so hard and listen people that have done it like that i often get messages saying tyler my hookup ratio skyrocketed for one like I said, I think it. I think it's man. This is as soon as that flathead comes, gets it. It's in there. Like it's it's all it's in. It's too late. Another thing is, and that helps with these short strikes too. But a lot of times when you're throwing a big bait like that, man, and current and stuff, that hook can be doing anything. But like I said, that helps prevent the hook from laying back over inside on the side of the brim and hooking back into it, missing fish. It for me, that is the best way that I know how to hook my life bait. Yeah. I don't even know what that was. Well, that was pretty cool. We need to do more of that. <laughs> uh, but no, that's, that's awesome. Like I said, it's, uh, it's those little things that can help anglers catch more fish. And then once you're out there and you catch more fish that you want to go out and get it again. Um, he said, Joey said, once I started putting my hook in like that, my hook abrasion went, up tremendously fantastic man that's great so, that's awesome. uh so another question here's another good one i would have asked this too but uh, angela and, and joey talk about uh, the bar, bar uh, barometric pressure what's your thoughts on that is it important do you change how you target fish depending on pressure uh, uh, no zero i don't think in in rivers that are shallow you know, I'm talking 20 feet or less, man, I don't think it makes any difference for no way, shape, which way, form. I don't think it does nothing. However, deeper rivers and lakes, I do think it can have some effect in it. Now, I, I'm not, 
you know, as an angler that's always fished these rivers that I have fished, I'm confident in saying the barometric pressure, don't don't stress it. Keep it simple. Don't worry about saying, man, the barometric pressure is high today, ain't gonna catch nothing. You can catch fish every day. There's no such thing. Here, here's something. Here's something that I stress to people, and I, and I don't know how many people's watching, but I hope it's hundreds. And when I do my seminar next month, here's something that I'm going to um, be preaching as well. There's one tip I'm about to tell everybody that has made me such a better angler on the water. And there's a lot of great fishermen that know this but don't tell people. But I'm going to tell you because I'm going to help you. Keep in mind, take this to the bank. I don't care if you got to get a tattoo of this. I don't care if you got to put it on your refrigerator. Remember this, and you're going to consistently do better. I promise you. There is no, it, this is Tyler. I'm, get, I'm probably going to get bashed for this, okay? People are going to say, Tyler, you're crazy. I don't, it doesn't really matter. There is no such thing as a slow day of fishing. You are either where the fish are or you're not, okay? And what I mean by that, I cannot tell you how many times, and I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a bragger. I'm not nothing. It doesn't matter. It, there's been so many times, I'm very observant, okay? And think about it for yourself. If you're tournament fishing and you went out there fishing, and, man, you fished for 12 hours long and you caught two fish. But, man, first, second, and third, first, second, third over there, man, they caught 20 fish that day. They had a blast. They slaughtered them. You'll notice it's like that just about every time. So once I started noticing, okay, I didn't catch nothing, but so-and-so over there is is dominating. They're, they're dominating. You Like Shane Walser said, find the feeding fish. I think... Like I said, once I learned that, I've had countless, countless, countless times that I've gone to a weigh-in and I have slaughtered the fish, okay? Like, I mean, I'm having 20, 30 fish days. I'm having doubles. I am just dominating. I get to the the weigh-in. Somebody comes up to me and says, Tyler, man, that was a tough day, man. That was, man, that was some tough fishing. And I'm like, yeah, it was. You know, I never tell, man, no, when I caught 30 fish, I'm never, you're never going to hear me say that. Uh, You know, just know that if you're fishing, especially pre-fishing for a tournament, that's how I look at it every time. If I've got a tournament coming up and I'm fishing and I'm not catching fish, it's not the barometric pressure, it's not my rigs, it's not my poles, it's not what boat I'm on, it's not the sun, it's not the moon. I'm not where the fish are, and it makes such a big difference. And you'll see the more that you move in the different sections of river that you fish can hold fish so much more here than over here. And once you put more time in on the water, once you put more time in on the water and you try different ramps and you try different areas, you'll see you'll go out there and you'll confuse yourself you'll go you'll put in at this ramp and man i caught two fish today fishing was so so bad but i'm gonna get up at daybreak and go somewhere else the next day the next day you went 75 miles away to a different ramp and you fish some deeper water or whatever it may be man it was the best day. man i caught so many fish the 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 clouds were out the day yesterday it was sunny man it's the best man hang that up you found the fish and you can go the next day and the next day and i don't care if it's storm and rain and hurricane you'll go and catch those fish again until they move because blue catfish move like you would not believe especially on a rising river man so 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 don't get discouraged when you're fishing and you're not catching and you're doing it right just know you're simply not where the fish are move move around move go to a different ramp go do something drastically different and you'll see that what i just said is very true or just look at your tournaments look at your proven example okay you've got 
50 people in the tournament, these five people at top are slaughtering them. They're always consistent. They are always on them. Are they lucky? Nah, they're just where the fish are, man. You got to find the fish. Trust me, they're feeding every day. Find out where they're at, and you're going to do good, man. There's no such thing as a slow day. Forget the barometric pressure. That Don't get complicated. The fish are put here to swim, spawn, and eat. And that's all they do, man. Just go find them. Just go throw the bait out and catch them. That's it. Yeah, that's what's funny about tournament fishing is, you know, you go out by yourself, like I said, you can get lazy and just, you know, not have a not have a good day. But when you tournament fish, just like our last one, Lake of the Ozarks, we had 48 boats. Out of 48 boats, some people had some very, I mean, it's a good fishery. Some people struggled. The top five, top ten, I mean, the first and second place did not struggle at all. That's I mean, second place. Nice. Uh, JT Ray said he got sick of catching fish, him and his wife and son. Yeah. I mean, they were just on them, on them, on them. You know what I mean? So the fish are biting somewhere, and if you're not catching fish, do the what you said. Do a drastic change. You know, go deep, go shallow, go up, go down, do something different and find those fish. Exactly. And a great example, you know, and I'll keep this short for you. The last tournament that I fished on the Noose River Championship Tournament, um, I fished um, live on TikTok, and I don't know if anybody was watching or if anybody remembers, um, but I fished for maybe seven hours. I caught one fish. And I told everybody on the live feed, I said, guys, it's not slow. These fish are feeding. They're they're here. But now I have fished enough spots. I know where they're at. And they're not here. I made a bad call. We're going to run. We're going to make a run. I got on the boat. We floored it. We rode for 45 minutes. And Alex, let me say something. I, as soon as I started anchoring up on this whole different, the river, the whole different area. I mean, not even, the, it's built different. Just whole different area. I caught so many fish. It it was like, boom, light switch. Everybody was like, man, you know, the fishing turned on, man. The, the moon went behind the, no, man. We, we, we moved to where the fish were. Ghost town here, 25 miles this way. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, we're calling. The rods is getting slammed. I'm sweating to death from catching nothing to dominating and ended up winning the tournament because we made a 25-mile run. And it was just because it don't take but an hour to win. It don't take but five minutes to win a tournament. It don't take but one yeah. minute. So when she make that move, you might not think it's worth it, but one cast out could be a difference. It really can. Yeah, because a lot of anglers will quit at noon. You know, they'll say, I've had a rough day. And they'll load their boat and go home. And like they, there's there's three hours of fishing left. So yeah. much can happen. Oh my gosh! Yes, Lord have mercy. Absolutely, absolutely. Never give up. Never as bad as things look. Don't man, don't quit. Because I'm telling you, I can. I, I there's been dozens of times where I fished all night looking one fish, one fish, one fish. Sun comes up, boom, fifty pounder. I mean it. I mean just it. Don't quit. Just. I don't care how many energy drinks you got to have. Just don't quit. Keep pushing and don't get bored and go to sleep. Go just, man, grind, grind, grind. You got to want it. You got to want it. So what's uh, what's next for you? Do you have any adventures you're taking? Do you have any bucket list places to go? Have you been to the Mississippi? Like what's your bucket list place to go or what's your like what's your plans for 2024? Yeah, so that's a good question. It's very emotional for me um, because, you know, I have fished here, you know, Alex, I have fished here locally forever. I'm extremely comfortable on the water. I have so many memories. I am just just so confident in my local surroundings. Um, you know... What I've decided to do is, you know, to Alex, I've I've invested in a new boat, something that is built as, as I got a Sea Arc Dynasty 2.0. And what I have promised myself is that for Tyler, in order for me, woo, there it is, <laughs> in order for me to get better as an angler, 
I must leave my comfort zone, okay? As much as there's a tournament here, and, you know, I'm pretty certain I can come top three or potentially win, I need to lay off of that. I've got to force myself to travel and find different bodies of water, fish in different tournament series, and get better. Improve not only to the people watching, but to myself, that the tactics that I'm preaching are not a joke, and they're serious, and they will work anywhere in the country, is my goal. As far as tournaments coming up, um, you know, I am brand new to lake fishing. Brand new. I mean, spanking brand new. Pulled my planter boards for the first time a couple weeks ago. Brand new. Like, this is I've the only anchor fished, okay? And the first tournament coming up is the Ice Bowl. So, I will. it's not this coming weekend, but the next. I'll be there. Um, don't know how that's going to go because that is, like, devastating me. I found a couple fish, but not really what I'm looking for. But I'm smart enough to know that I haven't found the fish but I haven't had enough time to put in. Um, but as far as, you know, larger events, I do plan on fishing the Sea Arc Invitational uh, coming in April. So I do plan on fishing that tournament. Very excited about that. Um, so, so our strategy is we will probably um, take a week off and probably travel down there. I think it's like over 10 hours for us to get there. Um, and we'll do some pre-fishing um, up until tournament day as well. So, so that's really one of the major, major, besides the Ice Bowl, Sea Arc Invitational is definitely one of the largest tournaments around. And I'm very, I'm very excited, very nervous to fish something like that because it's new to even me. That fishing 200 boat tournaments is new. I've only I'm used to 30 to 50 boats, not 250. So, um, but yeah, that that's that's definitely Alex on the on the bucket list. I want to someday, I would love, I'm not in a, I, I'm unfortunately not in a position to travel consistently and fish tournaments. But sure, I'd love to fish the King Cat Trail. I'd love to fish all these series. I'd love to fish all of them. I really would. I would fish every one of them if I could. But financially, that is impossible for me. Could you, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, I couldn't even yeah. imagine doing all that, you know. But, um, but long term, that's that's what I want to do, Alex. Is is you know, travel and fish and just bouncing back and forth between tournament series and trails and see what I can really do. That's that's my goal. Well, the Ice Bowl and the CR tournament is going to be two big events for him for sure. Oh, certainly. You know. So yeah, we'll, we'll love to have you at the Invitational. That's going to be a fun time. Yes, sir. The third, this will be uh, the thirteenth annual CR owners. So. That's crazy, man. I'm 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 definitely I'm definitely very excited to to you know to go fish and 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 meet everybody and you know if you know I don't like I said fit fishing out in places like that it's it's a learning curve for me, but what I also want to do is I want to put in a whole lot of time and learn these places and guess what I want to tell everybody what I've learned because there ain't no secrets here, dog. I want everybody to have confidence in their self. Whether they know that body water or not, I want everybody to do good. And if I can help, Tyler's going to help you. Take it to the bank. I'm going to help. So I had another question about how you target new bodies of water. So like if you're like the, the ice bowl, how far is that from you? Um, Depending on what ramp you put in, like Clarksville would be like two and a half hours. So are you look, do you look at maps a lot before you go to that lake? A lot. Kind of see what you like and kind of go check those areas out? Oh, certainly, yes. I'll spend a whole lot of time on like um like my Lake Master uh, map chip for my hummingbird or like Navionics or something like that, looking at the contours and seeing the differences and seeing um you know the different depths and how that lake is um you know built and looking at the rivers that come in and and things like that and kind of kind of predict and try to and it's hard for me because I'm I have this much experience on lakes, okay this much but i have been able to put fish in the boat nothing major uh, no hundred pound fish but i have found some areas that's been decent not 
not you know over the top coughing and over here or nothing but i've been able to catch a few fish we may get skunked on tournament that i i really don't know but yes before i go to any river james river um any river when if we ever, when we go to the seahawk invitational i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the time of year and know okay these fish may be running up river they could be down river they could be about middle of the pack or the shad running what's the what's the deal um what's the water temp um you know are they getting ready to pre-spawn is the spawn time? what was the deal and kind of look at the contours and the maps and the creeks and things like that and kind of go off of that but one thing i will say i i, I kind of feel like these fish and i can't confirm it i i can't confirm it because like i said i'm new to lakes i hope to confirm it one day maybe a year from now or two we can revisit this same question yeah. but i i kind of think they're gonna all act the same man you know the fish is a fish different body of water i swear they're gonna do the same thing you know they got to eat swim and spawn i mean you just got to find out where they're more comfortable at doing that and what body of water I, I, me and where does the bait go is the bait in the lake or maybe do they go in creeks or maybe are they in the flats on the main lane you got to see and you know but there's a lot of things but whenever i approach a new body of water I use the biggest tip that I just give away to anybody. If Tyler's not catching them, Tyler's not where they're at. I got to move because they are biting. I got to find them. So that, that's that's how I approach everything. That's what keeps me confident in knowing that I'm doing it right or wrong. Because if I'm catching them, well, great. I found some fish. Were they the right fish? I don't know. Could be. Uh, well, did I get skunked that day and catch one little fish this long? Well, I certainly wasn't in the right area. You know, they weren't there. Because these fish, a lot of times, they move together, man, especially blue cats. And they'll move a lot, a whole lot. Oh, yeah. And we, Liz and I and uh, Charlie were on them in, on the Mississippi River Monsters where, you know, we did a one-on-one -on -one deal there. And just we just happened to find them the day before. We, we struggled pre-fishing for a day and a half. I and mean, we caught a few fish here, a few fish there. But then the, the Friday afternoon, just I came down – scanned an uh, outside bank and just fish. They were just loaded. And then rods in the water for 10 seconds, fish, and it was over. I mean, it just <clears> – <throat> but, you know, finding those fish and staying after it. Because uh, in, in tournament situations, you have a lot of anglers that will go seven days before and be on fish and then not realize that those, like you said, fish move. Seven days later, they go to the tournament and they're skunked. Correct. It, yep, yeah. exactly. You're 100 percent right, and there's a lot of variables that can change that. Sometimes you might get lucky and they stay in the whole the same area. It could be flood stage for some reason, and that, that rising current current plays a huge factor on the 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 way the fish move. Water temp and current is is really the major two factors, man. Once you kind of learn what they might do this time of year during this current, man, you can smack them. You can really get on them. So before your new Dynasty 2.0, what did you fish out of? Uh, I have a, and I still have it, a Sea Arc uh, 2072 FXT. So it's a, of course, prop tunnel um, that I tore up numerous times trying to get in these shallow areas as far as the lower unit, you know. So I actually converted it over to a jet drive. So it's a, it's like I said, it's a Ford console. 2072 uh arc fxt with a 11580 suzuki uh jet drive and with the jet drive i'm able no matter what the water level is um i'm able to get into that shallow water uh and when i say shallow i'm able to go in three or four inches without having any worries whatsoever i mean you can go wide open three three four inches of water as long as there's water i can go and uh and a lot of times that that definitely helps get to these areas that these kind these flatheads are kind of bound up in sometimes or or um it really helps whenever sometimes you know depending on certain rivers there may be rapids you have to go through and if you go through rapids oh, wow. and stuff with a prop you can only imagine that's how i got a jet put <laughs> yeah i've seen some of the props of these anglers i don't know what they get into but yeah no that, that so you have two boats kind of depending on what you're going to do determines maybe the boat you're going to take to that event yeah that and fishing. i yeah and 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 i tell you this is something i have not talked about um really to anybody but it's really i you know i don't like to make any moves quickly um you know when i got the dynasty i was like okay 
you know, I need to sell my other bow. I'm strictly on the dynasty. But then I was like, man, you know, there is a few major tournaments on the noose and the Cape Fear and these other rivers that I still would like to join every once in a while. I'm not fishing a series, but that doesn't mean I want to just vanish. Maybe I want to go on a quick fishing trip and maybe the weather's horrible where I was going to go, and but it's pretty here. Or, you know, just a quick trip. But one thing that I'm really considering or thinking about, you know, maybe a good idea, maybe a bad idea. I might not be able to fit it in. I might, I don't know. I actually was looking or really putting some serious thought in starting a guide service on my local rivers as a part-time guide. Okay. Two or three trips a month to to help there's so many anglers around me that all the time say you know you know tyler man i'm just not understanding i'm hearing your tips i'm I'm seeing your tricks i'm seeing you do it on live and i'm just not getting it and i want people i want people to know that i'm so serious and i'm so this is so real and if I'm not worried about a tournament standpoint anymore, I mean, I would love, as far as local, I would love to share my ultimate tips, secrets, spots, areas with my local anglers, or even if they're out of state and they want to come, maybe they've never caught a flag and they'd like to come. And, um, but you know, that, that's definitely something, you know, that's a lot. When you start a guide or that's, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a lot. There's a lot going on with, with, with doing that. Not that I wouldn't love to do it because I, I would, but it's, I'm trying to weigh out a guide service versus traveling and tournament fishing. Like I said, local, I'm not, I'm not concerned anymore. It is what it is. If somebody wants to, you know, come do a trip and learn how to catch flatheads, it will, hey, come, hey, let's go. But it's, or blues, it doesn't matter, or just a tournament or, or whatever the case may be, whatever, whatever, you know, the person wants, I'm here for you. But, you know, it's just, there's just a lot of stuff there. And I may end up selling the boat and, um, and, and not doing it at all. You know, I don't know. Um, Shane says, how do I get the first trip? Shane, I got you on the list, dog. <laughs> Oh Shane, <clears throat> yeah, I love Shane. He's the man. But uh, you know, there's a lot of um, you know, because Alex, you know, I've I had fish like the noose in the Cape Field. Like I have, you know, I'm not bragging or by any means, but I've won, you know, I think like five tournament series championships out of like seven, and the other two I caught in second. And there's times, and, and what why I even brought that up is because there's times, and that doesn't matter, okay? That doesn't matter how much somebody wins. But why I bring that up in the amount of times that I have been fortunate is going back to whenever I go to the weigh-ins and these angles that are just getting started or they've been doing it a little while and they haven't been super <laughs> successful just yet because it's coming. You know, they come to me and, you know, Tyler, man, it, you know, this and that and all this, you know, I didn't do so good or what did I do wrong and this and that. And sometimes it's easier for me to show you because sometimes I'm out there catching 20, 30 fish and I'm like, there's so many people that would have such a good time doing this and it would open their eyes to a whole nother world. And, you know, but being a competitive tournament angler, I don't mind giving out all the tips and tricks, but sometimes you can't give away your spots. You mean, because you work hard for your areas that you fish. Just being natural, I've put in thousands of hours on the water, and I simply don't want to give you a waypoint, you know, because that doesn't make that angler any better. But I don't mind telling you exactly how I found these spots. And that's from all the tips and tactics I've told everybody tonight and it's very it's very true now i've held back nothing um you know but with the guide service that would be it would be exciting and you know it's just it's just a lot there that a lot of uncertainties alex on as far as that goes so that's to be determined but who would have thought though years ago that you're in a situation now where you've got you just bought your second sea arc and now you kind of have the options where you've you've built yourself into such 
you know, on social media where you have followers, where people would love to go out with you just because that you're Tyler Barnes and you're a positive influence, you're a great person. So that's cool to be sitting in this scenario when you got these options where I can go this route, I can go this route, I can do this. And that's, I mean, that's got to be awesome. It, you, know? you know, it is. And I'm very humbled, you know, by the situation. And, uh, you know, like I said, man, I'm just, I know how I look forward to every weekend. And I'm like, man, I don't care where I'm getting up at daybreak. It doesn't matter the weather. I'm so excited to go. And I know there's so many people that are so excited to go as well, but it's easy to get discouraged. And I'm trying to find my ultimate purpose in the sport, Alex, essentially. What is my purpose? Like, I'm a guy that, you know, I want to make a difference in the industry. And and I feel like I am, but what's long term? Am I supposed to be a tournament angler? Am I supposed to be a guide? Am I supposed to be um what is it and that brings up full real fishing too about positivity promoting people and joining a big fishing community that uplifts everybody and gets everybody out on the water no matter what species of fish that they're fishing for but you know there's just i'm i'm 28 years old you know it's there's a there's so much going on there's so much so many thoughts and so many angles and trying to run a business and trying to promote other anglers and trying to do social media and trying to do a guide and trying to do tournament fishing and trying to, man, what is the real, because we're all here for, for a, sh a short time. And while I'm here, I'm, cer yeah. I'm, I'm certainly going to do what I want to do, but what is it? What is my purpose? And I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what what what's ten years from now. Look at what ten years did. Okay, we're we're here, and I'm I, I don't mean that in any kind of way, but what's ten more years? And and I want to encourage everybody here that's wanting to build a presence in in the fishing industry. Think about it that way too. Uh, you may just be getting started. You may be a, started for a little while, but think time's gonna fly just like that if you keep pushing and being positive and fishing and promoting yourself. Don't be afraid to promote yourself. You'll see, man, in just a little time, because it's going to come by whether you do something with it or not. Time's coming. And you, yeah. I, I suggest, you know, use your time wisely and do what works for you. But but anyway, I, that, that gets into a whole other realm of stuff. <laughs> but who knows what's coming? Well, that's cool. Like I said, I, I, I've been following you for a while. I know a lot of people have been following you for a while. And, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it's always about being positive and helping others. And you've been doing that. And it's, it's great to see you have so many options. And, uh, you know, you'll be at CatCon. You'll be speaking at CatCon in February. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's a good chance to, to meet you there at CatCon for people that want to, to listen to your stuff. And then obviously you're on TikTok. What all social media platforms are you on? And, and like you said, that's tough. I mean, I'm on TikTok a little bit, but, you know, like, you know, just posting pictures, videos, reels every day. Like Liz and I were talking about that. Man. that that's tough. It's a lot of work. It's a lot it, of work. It definitely is, man, because, you know, I'm on Facebook a lot. You know, of course, um. You know, you can just go to Facebook and type in my name and you'll hopefully see me and give me a follow, a friend request, and I'd be glad to, um, you know, follow you back as well, whoever decides to do so. Um, TikTok is the big thing. Um, if you'd like to go to TikTok and look up Tyler Barnes underscore catfishing, you'll see my page. Uh, feel free to give me a follow. Like I said, we do um, a lot of live fishing trips, a lot of tactics, a lot of tackle talk. We try to keep it real, bring you guys to the events. Um, you know, within doing that, trying to build a brand that promotes anglers is also hard because not only do Tyler got to promote Tyler, I've got to promote everybody that is on the four real fishing team or family or community. It's that four real fishing is open to anybody. So I encourage anybody to go to Facebook and, and look up our, our company four real fishing. We have some really great things coming in the future that is going to be great for everybody. But like I said, that's going to be an ultimate community that we hope, you know, just 
we'd like to share everybody's content and promote other anglers and just, you know, build a positive surrounding is what we want to do. So, but yeah, primarily on Facebook and TikTok, I got an Instagram. Don't, don't do, don't, you, you, you follow me if you want to, but um, I don't get on Instagram. I, there's no way I can do business page. I got six emails. Okay. I got six emails. I've got Facebook. I've emails. got, uh, yeah, because I'm at, I'm, you know, with work related and stuff, I've got so many different things. I've got business emails. I've got, uh, sometimes it, you know, but I have got to maintain what I love to do, which is this. I love this right here. So whatever it may cost, you better believe Tyler's not going anywhere. And I hope, you know, to, to just, make an impact on people in the fishing industry, hopefully in a good way, hopefully in a good way. Yeah. Again, that's, you know, kind of the reason I started this Monday night podcast is, is a way to, to give back to the anglers and, and show them that, Hey, you know, I, I have somebody different on every Monday night. We talk about them, you know, they're fishing their techniques and how anybody else can get out there and do it. And uh, like I said, this has been a great show and I appreciate you being on here. Hey, man, it's an honor to be up here, man. When you sent me a message, I was like, oh, my gosh, let's go. This is going to be the best. <laughs> uh, so, man, I'm excited, man. And, you know, Alex, if there, you know, if there's anything that I can do, or if you want to do another podcast in the future about it, maybe a different topic, maybe, you know, we primarily covered flight is tonight. But if you want to look at um different baits and tactics for blue cat fish and chat in, in different times. Of the, hey, I'm game. I know we've already been live for two hours. And uh, <laughs> so, um, but I'm down for anything that I can help with. I'd love to be on the show at any time. So never hesitate to ask me. I'm here for you. Yeah, we'll have to, obviously I can't, my boat's in the in a heated garage right now, just crying <laughs> for me. But uh, when it gets nice out, I, we, we'll have to do a, a Monday night live, maybe on the water or something where we're kind of both fishing and stuff like that and do some fun stuff. So Certainly, man. Absolutely, man. You name it. Let's go. We'll show out, you know, try to get more in depth, show some tackle talk. And, uh, you know, some, some, some real stuff, man. See if we can't catch some fish on the live feed and hang out a couple hours. Um, you know, just have fun, you know, just, just have a good time. Yeah. So what are you talking about at CatCon? So What's your topic? Pr pretty much same thing we just talked about, which is great practice here. So essentially, uh, shallow river tactics, you know, and how I go about targeting these fish, what rigs, um some some things that you know maybe how i hook the baits maybe you know i hope to have a better um presentation as far as that goes i'm not certain on if i'm going to do like a slideshow type deal i don't know if anybody has any input on that i don't know if um you know who's going to cat con or or who might would I, I don't know if people would rather me just talk like this or if people would rather me show visuals or short video clips um because i certainly don't mind taking short video clips showing you how to hook bait or how to cut bait or there might be a little ways that i cut bait that i think enhances your odds of catching fish tips tri you know would you like to see exactly what i'm fishing in real time through clips i i don't know you know that's for people to hopefully tell me but um i'm limited as you can tell alex we've been doing this for an hour and 53 minutes i've got 45 so I've got 45 minutes to do it plus a 10, 15 minute Q and a, uh, so, but if you guys are going to CatCon, please, it, you know, join the seminar if you can, if you cannot, um, that's, that's understandable. Um, but come see us at the four real fishing booths. It'll be me, several of our affiliates. We're going to be, you know, promoting everybody going live talking. I'd love to have some one-on-one -on -one time with you, get to know you. Um, and you know, just hang out and just, just have a good time. So I would love to see you guys there, but, uh, I'm gonna try to cram as much information as I can in 45 minutes without being overwhelming. I'm pretty much going to talk about tackle. I want to do a short introduction, probably, right? Uh, tackle talk uh, and some two to three or four main things that has helped me be successful on these shallow water situations. And then really, that's all the time I got. I, I'm out of time. I, I could talk for hours, but it's, you know, it's, you just run out of that 45 minutes when you really get into something. Man, it don't take no time. It's gone.
it, I mean, <clears throat> we're almost two hours. And like I said, I've, I've went one time three hours and 15 minutes. There's that's what when I started this podcast, I'm like, <clears throat> we'll do an hour a week. You know, that, that can't be too bad. An hour a week. Yeah. I'll tell you what, first off, my hat's off to anybody doing a weekly show. It has been extremely tough nice. to every week. Cause like this today, I felt rough. I did not want to be on the show. I was like, I don't know that I can talk. I don't know that anybody can hear me. I got a pounding headache. But we just got to do it. We got to get through it. But uh, because people want to hear what, you know, we got to say yes. and, and bring people on. But uh, that's awesome. Like I said, I, I think CatCon, you're going to get a lot of stuff. You're going to have your own booth. Oh, so yeah. That's gonna so, be awesome. Yep. So, so man, and we hope to have everybody's support. We're going to have a, a, a fairly decent area. It's a 10 by 20. We're going to have a lot of new apparel, a lot of new products and stuff out there that you guys have not seen if you do follow our brand. Um, but we'd love your support pretty much you know um you know we we just want to see everybody there um you know we're gonna have a big banner oh my goodness will you, will you have this there because i gotta get one of those for my <laughs> oh my name. god so and, and so a quick story about the bobblehead okay so man i got i caught a lot of crap on that thing let me tell you people were like some people were like man that's the coolest thing ever some people were like wow that tyler thinks he's yada 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 well let me tell you a follower on TikTok that I've never met in my life in person. We become good friends. He actually went and had a, a pallet full of bobbleheads made, shipped to my house just so our followers could have that to buy if they would like to. And that's that's what I'm saying. That's the power of being surrounded by positive people. Tyler don't have yeah. no money in that. Okay. Tyler don't have no money in that. This 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 man, he, he likes to be anonymous, but you know, he reached out and said, Tyler, what about bobbleheads? I said, Man, absolutely not. Okay. We're not gonna do that. He said, Oh, certainly we are. Yeah, I, I'm like, uh, he's like, I'll buy them, <laughs> I'll send them to you. And uh Angela's got two bobbleheads. So so and and honestly they they ended up being like super cool and a lot of people loved them. So we do have some extras, of course, because I mean we had I'm telling you, a lot of bobbleheads <laughs> shipped over here. So we'll have those at the catfish conference too. And but anyway, that's that's definitely um super cool. And that that just tells you when you surround yourself with positive people that want to help you. Man, any you never know who you can meet, man. That'll help lift you up and support you and take you to the next level. Yeah. Well, man, awesome. I like I said, I appreciate you being on here. Obviously, some things we learned. The fishing, the fishing's always on fire somewhere. Always find the fish. Yep. Uh, be positive. Surround yourself with positive people, and and give back, and and don't be scared to show yourself. And like I said, look what you've done on social media. Even if you if you go out and fun fish and you catch that ten pound fish, or you don't catch a fish at all, take yeah. pictures, show people, show people the rig you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, whether you're tripping or you're special. Not, don't be scared to show anybody what you're doing, how to be successful, and uh, just go out there and have fun. And look at what Tyler Barnes has done for himself. Um, and how cool, like still, like, I don't know that I'm ever gonna catch a state record because where I'm at, they're like oh crazy, God. like. 134 pounds or something like that, but uh, not in a flathead, but in blue cat. But uh, uh -huh. man, that's like I said, that's awesome. I, I'm that's super. I can't even imagine what you were going through catching a state record flathead, especially because you're talking oh. ounces from oh. just I mean. dude. But you know, and Alex, you know, that goes right back to I feel I don't know my purpose here in the sport. I really don't. Um, you know, I know what Tyler wants to do, but is there more? Is there less? Is this it? I, I don't know. But, you know, for me to be ripping down the river and some people, look, I'm not going to say I'm so good I called a state record. Man, that was, man, that thing right there, that was luck, right? Like catching a state record. I mean, of course I go fishing and I study these fish and I fish a lot, but man, catching a state, look at it like this. It took 15 years for every angler in the state of North Carolina fishing every body of water to catch that one fish. Uh, of course, if anybody's wondering, that is a replica, and the 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 you know the, the the fish was released alive. But that goes back to me trying to figure out my purpose in the sport because I'm not going anywhere. 
um, I'm only going to, you know, continue promoting everybody, uh, including myself. Um, but, you know, for me to be ripping down the river and finding a little tree that I 100, I promise with everything I got, never have fished it. Never. Never even really noticed it. Just a little tree in the water, man. There's nothing for me to have this overwhelming like dude like i can't even imagine like, i can't even describe it like like i'm going down the river and it just hits me like turn around like you can almost hear i don't want to get like scary or nothing but you could almost hear turn around like like <laughs> like dude i'm telling you like it was it was crazy so, and after ignoring it the first time, about 30 seconds later, it hit me again, but harder. I was like, okay, whoa, something's, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to go fish it, stay record. Now, that ain't a coincidence, okay? There's, that led to more things, which led to this podcast, which led to me saying that same statement, which is going to lead to something else in the future that I don't know. But it's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm here for a long time, so I like that. Good. Well, man, <clears throat> this has been a blast. Uh, I can't. I guess I'll see you here in a few, well, less than a month almost. Uh, nah. We'll be at Cat in, in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, if you're close by, definitely come stop by. You'll see a lot of cool things uh, at the show. It's really the only catfish-specific show in the country that I'm aware of. Um, and, again, thanks for being on my cat podcast at Twisted Cat Outdoors Live um we appreciate you and uh anybody wanting to follow tyler barnes like i said TikTok, facebook he's a social media guru as i as i put in the title <laughs> and i you are uh no, every time i get no. on TikTok, you're live and, and like i said I, I really enjoy watching your live stuff and uh just like you said be positive surround yourself with positive people and go after it uh the world you can do whatever you want you just got to stick you know keep your mind to it stay after it be positive self-confidence uh, yeah and me and you one of these days are going to do a little live on the water stuff so certainly uh, absolutely absolutely so anything, else, anything else you got left to say before we close out you know um you know not not really alex but but like i said what i can't stress enough to people is if there's anything and, and listen I may be a little slow getting the messages sometimes. Um, but if you ever send me a, like a, a message on, on Facebook messenger or something, that's honestly probably your best way to get up with me. Okay. But if there's anything for anybody that's watching still, um, if there's anything that I can do to help you for any reason, what we talk about is between us. Okay. So, don't think I'm a, you know, I'm not that guy screenshot and sending over here to Joe Blow of it. No, if you got something that's on your mind, you think I can help, or you just need a little advice on how to go about it. I can't, you know, some things I can't tell you how to go about it. Sometimes we got to figure out for ourselves and what works for each other, but I can definitely guide you in the best way that I know possible. So never hesitate to contact me. Um, like I said, and if, if you if not, I hope to see everybody at the Catfish Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we'll be um, at the Four Real Fishing Booth. Four Real Fishing Booth. And uh, we'll be there all day Friday and Saturday. And I'll also be doing some seminars. So so show up. Let's chit chat. Give me some, give me some, you know, some I'll be shaking in my boots up there, man. You know, you got hundreds of people out there, you know. So I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to be on my A game, man. So y'all come put me up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. Well, awesome, man. Like I said, I appreciate it. And uh, for those of you watching, our next event is February 3rd, Grove, Oklahoma, Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Again, it will be a $300 entry, 100% payback, plus $500 from Castaway Customs on the Big Fish. And we also have our grassroots $50 entry at every event, 100% uh, payback. So if you want to get your feet wet, 50 bucks an entry per team or for the main event, main series, $300. And again, this is season 10 for Twisted Cat. and I don't know if there's really a season for this this live show. We just kind of just, like I said, threw it out there, ran with it, and it's still going, and it's fun. And like I said, we're kind of in that same situation where just who knows what's next. There's a lot of things moving, a lot of good changes, and we're just staying after it, man.
So that's it for you. I tell you, you're doing a phenomenal job. I think it's um, uh, you know, a lot of props to you. <clears throat> a lot of props to you for for maintaining such a podcast and tournament trails in it because buddy what you're doing is a lot of work a lot of work and dedication and to do it as professionally as you are <clears throat> is incredible and i applaud you for everything that you're doing i, I just want you to know that i think you're doing a, a fantastic job at it well i appreciate it i appreciate it very well, well everybody so much thank you for watching have a great monday night hopefully if you're in this what do they call this is vortex or whatever crazy <laughs> weather uh hopefully it gets by i'm waiting for next monday i think it'll be in the 30s or 40s so i can't wait i'm gonna be running around the house but uh uh everybody get through the week have a good week and we'll see you next monday night and i'll leave you with a quick uh message about our next event mm -hmm. and again stay warm and we'll see you next week Hey anglers, we hope you join us February 3rd at Grand Lake of the Cherokees in Grove, Oklahoma. It's our first time on that lake. We're really pumped about it. Again, we got 100% payback for a $300 entry. We also have our grassroots series is a $50 entry, 100% payback. But come join us, Grove, Oklahoma, Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Gonna be a fun time, February 3rd. Hope to see you there.